is Maria Liatica. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at St. David's Episcopal Church. This year's VBS is going to look different, but I think we're going to have a great time, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care. Well, here we go. Well, hey everybody, my name is Casey Jordan, and I am so excited to be your host for Bolt VBS. For the next three days, we have some seriously wacky games that you are going to love playing right there at home. Together, we're going to run and throw and splash and bolt our way towards a stronger faith in Jesus. Before we get started though, I wanna give you a little challenge of my own. I'm going to say something very quietly, and I wanna see if you can tell what I'm saying. Are you ready? Listen carefully. Now, unless you can read lips, you probably don't know what I said, but let me do it again. This time, I'll say it a little bit louder. Listen carefully. Could you hear me that time? I was still being really quiet. So let me do it one more time. This time, I'll say it even louder. Listen carefully. God's word is a lamp to my feet. Did you hear it that time? If so, nice job. I said, God's word is a lamp to my feet. That's today's Bible verse from the book of Psalms. Now, think for just a second about how carefully you just listened. That's how carefully we should always listen to God's word. Even though people aren't usually mouthing or whispering the words from the Bible, we should listen that carefully to every word from scripture. We're gonna find out why later on, but right now, I think it's time for us to set up our first game. So come on, let's bolt. Welcome everybody to BSTN, Bolt Sports Television Network. My name is David Rausch, and this is my co-anchor, Tim the Tater Tot Woodrum. Tim, why do they call you the Tater Tot? Uh, well, David, they don't. Only you do. Is that right? And a big welcome to all of you viewers at home. Thanks for joining us for today's broadcast of the sport that is sweeping the nation. A sport called Head Shoulders Cup. That's right, David. Some of today's most elite athletes compete in Head Shoulders Cup. It's the sport of careful listening mm -hmm. and quick acting. And to give you an idea of what it takes to dominate in this sport, I interviewed last year's world champion, Sammy the Sloth. Wait, wait, Tim. First of all, sloths aren't quick acting. They have a terrible reaction time. And secondly, you can't interview a sloth. They don't talk. Do they not, David? Sammy the Sloth, thank you for joining us. Can you give us an idea of what it took for you to become Head Shoulders Cup World Champion? Thanks for having me on, Tim. You're really a great guy. The key to becoming champion is listening carefully for the word cup. You should also listen carefully when I say that you Tim Woodrum, are one of the most handsome people I've ever seen. Tim, that is obviously just you doing the voice of a sloth. Well, agree to disagree, David. If only there were time, Tim. But it looks like today's match is about to begin. Let's go down to the field where Casey is going to explain how the competition works. All right, athletes, you know how this game works. You're gonna kneel facing each other with a cup in between you. When I say head, you're gonna touch your head. When I say shoulders, you're gonna touch your shoulders. And when I say cup, you wanna grab the cup as quickly as you can. Now, if you grab it first, you win the round. But if you grab it too soon, the point goes to the other person. We're gonna play the best of five rounds. Do you understand the rules? Yes, ma'am! All right, athletes, let's get in position. All right, athletes, get ready. Head. Shoulders, head, head, shoulders, head, cup. Oh, yeah. Head, shoulders, 
Shoulders. Head. Head. Shoulders. Head. Shoulders. Head. Cup. Are you ready? Head. Shoulders. Shoulders. Head. Shoulders. Head. Head. Shoulders. Cup. <laughs> yeah! Head. Shoulders. 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 Head. Shoulders. Head. Cup. Are you ready? Head. Shoulders. 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 Head. Shoulders. Head. Cup. Yay! Nice job! That was truly a battle of champions. And now, for those of you watching at home, it's your turn to play. That's right, Tim. When I say so, press pause on the video. Then play as many rounds of Head Shoulders Cup as you would like. But when you're finished, don't rest just yet because there are even more games for you to play. When all of the games are finished, grab a snack, open your Bibles to the verses on the screen, and read them together. After that, Press play again and join us in progress. Are you ready? It's time to bolt in three, two, one. Press pause. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm Mrs. Fisher, and I don't know if any of you remember me, but I've been working with Miss Maria for many years doing Vacation Bible. And most of the time I'm behind the scenes. I've been setting up the stage or making costumes or setting up the marketplace with baskets and all kinds of fun things. And that's really what I like to do best. Although the last few years I have been a teacher as well, and I've really enjoyed it. And I must say that this year, it's gonna be awfully hard for me not to be with you. I'm gonna miss you an awful lot. But I think this year's Vacation Bible School, even though it's virtual, is going to be a lot of fun. And today's lesson is all about the plentiful sower and about sowing seeds and listening to God's word and I know you're gonna have a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun games and some interesting Bible uh, lessons. And I have a feeling you're going to like the funny people who are doing this show this year. And even though it's not me, and I don't get to see you and hug you and tell you how great and wonderful you are and dance and sing and be joyful about God's word, well, I know you'll be having a wonderful time at home. And just remember that God loves you, and so do I. And I cannot wait until we get a chance to see each other again. Bye-bye. Welcome back, kids. I hope you had a blast playing those games. Head, Shoulders, Cup is one of my all-time favorites. But that's not really why we played it. We played it because, believe it or not, it reminds me of our Bible story for today. Let me tell you the story and maybe you'll see what I mean. In Luke chapter eight, Jesus tells a parable called the sower and the seed. A parable is kind of like a made up story that teaches a real lesson. In the story that Jesus tells, there's a farmer who goes out into his field to plant some seeds. The farmer grabs a handful of seeds and scatters them all over the ground. Jesus says that some of the seeds fell on a path. But before they could ever take root, people walked on the seeds and birds ate them up. Some of the other seeds fell on rocky ground. Those seeds started to grow into plants, but before they got too big, the plants dried up because there just wasn't enough water in the rocky soil. Other seeds fell in the middle of thorn bushes. They too started to grow, 
but the thorns grew with them and choked the plants out before they ever got very big. But there were some seeds that fell on good soil. Now those seeds, those seeds, grew up big and healthy, and they produced a crop that was a hundred times more than the farmer planted. When Jesus finished telling his story, he said, whoever has ears should listen. Well, Jesus had 12 disciples. A disciple is like a student or a close follower. The disciples had ears and they were listening, but they weren't understanding. They said to Jesus, great story, but what does it mean? Jesus said, I'll tell you what it means. The seed is like the word of God. The seed on the path is like people who hear the word of God, but the devil comes in and snatches it up from them before they ever believe it and get saved. The seed on the rocky ground is like people who hear the word of God and they receive it with joy and excitement, but their faith is shallow and they have no roots. Then, when life gets tough, they stop believing it. Jesus then says, the seed that fell in the middle of the thorns is like people who hear the word of God, but as they go about their life, their faith gets choked out by life's worries and money and fun. So they never fully grow in their faith. Finally, Jesus explains the meaning of the last seed. He says, but the seed that lands on the good soil, that seed is like people who listen carefully to the word of God. They grab a hold of it and they keep it close to their heart. Those people, Jesus says, stay faithful and live an abundantly good life. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the BSTN coverage of Professional Indoor Origami. My name is David Rausch, and I'm joined by my co-anchor, Tim Woodrum. Tim, we have what will undoubtedly be an exciting match for viewers today. David, what a joy it is to be here today in the middle of the action. Nowadays, it's tough to find quality origami done by qualified origamis. Typically, it's only on pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. I see what you did there, Tim. Today's paper folding athlete will be attempting to create a paper flower. Now, viewers at home, remember that you too can participate in the origami action. For today's event, you'll need two square pieces of paper of any color, including white. That's right, David. Viewers at home, see if you can keep up with today's athletes. But if at any time you need to pause or rewind the video, including right now, don't hesitate to do so. Well, Tim, it looks like the match is about to begin. Let's go ringside to see the action. Today, we have the great fortune of watching Hans Handerson from Germany attempt to make a flower out of these two pieces of paper. You know, David, it is great to see Hans back on the court after last year's season ending paper cut. I agree, Tim. It was a huge loss to the sport to lose a superstar like Hans Handerson. In fact, when Hans went on the disabled list, the entire professional indoor origami league almost folded. But now he is back and better than ever. Hans folds his paper corner to corner to form a triangle, then corner to corner again to form an even smaller triangle. He opens it back up to reveal a center line down the middle. Now he's pulling one corner of the triangle over, flattens down the edge, And now he folds the other corner across it, almost like it's hugging itself. Yeah, and you'll see that Hans is really working to flatten those folds down. That gives the origami a clean, crisp look to it. And just like that, we have the first half of the flower complete. You can hear the crowd erupting in cheers. They like what they see so far. Quiet, quiet on the board, please. Judge calls for a little more quiet. I'll tell you, Tim, Hans makes this look easy, but it really does require some concentration. Popcorn. Popcorn. 
Now, this is a tricky move here. You see, he folds one corner to the center line. He flattens the edge. Now he folds the other corner to the center line. Wow, that was a powerful. You are right, Tim. I haven't seen a fold like that since the 49ers in the Super Bowl. What a masterful performance this is. Han makes one last fold and flattens the edges down. Now what do we have here? Look at this move. He's reaching for the flower. He's connecting it to the stem. <laughs> Would you look at that? Hans Henderson has done the impossible. He has turned a piece of paper into a living, breathing flower. No, Tim, it, it's not alive. It's just a paper flower, but it is impressive nonetheless. And there you have it, folks. That does it for today's broadcast of Professional Indoor Origami. Join us again tomorrow for another masterful performance by the origami superstar, Hans Handerson. Happy folding, friends. Hey guys, welcome to the art class today. Today we're gonna to be making some flower pots. So you're gonna start off with your pot, some tissue paper that we've given you, some glue and water mixed together, and then your seeds for later. So we're gonna start by putting some glue onto the pot and then take whatever colors you like and start applying them to the pot. And then when you've done that, you put one more layer of glue on top and you keep on going until the pot is done. Thank you. And this is my finished flower pot. You can make it however you like. But when you're done, you can go outside and get some dirt and plant the flower seeds inside. Thank you. So you might be thinking, wait a second. Casey said that today's game reminded her of today's Bible story. Well, let me explain. In order to win at Head Shoulders Cup, you had to do two important things. First, you had to listen carefully for the right word. And second, when you heard it, you had to grab the cup and hold it tight before it got snatched away. Do you see the connection? In the story Jesus told, he said the seed that lands on the good soil is like people who listen carefully to the word of God. And when they hear it, they grab a hold of it and they keep it close to their heart so that no one can snatch it away. God's word is the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, or if you read it, but you don't listen carefully to what it says, or hold it close to your heart, then it's easy for the devil to come and snatch away your faith, or to stop believing when life gets tough, or to have worry choke out your walk with Jesus. But if you read the Bible every day, if you hold its words in your heart and do what it says, you will be like the seed that falls on the good soil. You will stay faithful to God and live an abundantly good life. Now, I have a question for you. After I ask the question, I want you to pause the video and talk about it with the people around you. When you're finished, you can press play again. Okay, here's my question. What can you do to make the Bible a bigger part of your life? Press pause and discuss. Welcome back. I hope you came up with some great ideas. I have an idea for you. One of the best ways to hold God's word close to your heart is to memorize it. In fact, Let's practice with an easy one right now. I'll show you a verse from the Bible about God's word. Let's read it and remember it together. Are you ready? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Nice job. 
Let's do it again, but this time, some of the words are going to disappear. Say it with me again. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. That was really good. Let's do it again, but this time, even more of the words are going to disappear. And you're going to say it without me. Are you ready? Go ahead and say it. Let's do it one more time, but this time all of the words are going to disappear. Are you ready? Say it one last time. I know that was a pretty easy verse, but that was amazing. And if you keep on doing that, the seed of God's word is going to take root in your heart and no one, not even the devil, will take that away from you. Hey kids, I'm Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way and today we are going to sing a song together called Bulletproof. I'm here in my studio, you guys are at home and together we're gonna sing and make some awesome joyful noises to the Lord. You see, Bulletproof's about the armor of God. Ephesians 6 gives us all the information. God gave us the armor to stand up against whatever the devil throws against us. In Jesus' name, we can stand on his word, the truth, and we can just take whatever the enemy throws against us. Because Psalm 119, 105 says, his word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. No matter how dark the dark gets, the light will shine brighter. So what do you say? Can you help me out? I need you to help me with some snaps, like this. Uh, come on, get your snaps on, nice and loud. Here we go, bring mom and dad, here we go, two, three, and. Uh, can you tell me now, can you tell me now? Got it, uh, uh, come on, snap, uh, here we go one more time. I'm not afraid, no matter what the world may 
follow Jesus. On the words, I have decided, we're going to point to our heads like this. On the word follow, we're going to make a pass with our hands like this. And on the word Jesus, we're going to make a cross with both of our hands like this. Let's try it. other book like the Bible. It is full of God's words to us, and those words are worth listening to. Earlier, you talked about ways that you can make the Bible a bigger part of your life. My prayer for you is that you would actually do those things, because the more you listen to God's word, the harder it is for the devil to snatch away your faith. And hey, we might be done for the day, but there is more to come. Do you want to see a preview of tomorrow's game? Okay, watch close because it's going to happen fast. Hold on! <laughs> Stop it! I told you it was going to be fast. If you want to see the rest of that game and play it for yourself, join me tomorrow so that we can bolt into action again. And in the meantime, thanks for joining us. Bye!